Hey, Pop Barn standing in for David Britt. I always give a teaser on my Focus on Health show, so I'm going to give you all one. Very rarely do you get a freebie. Nobody gives out anything free anymore, do they? Think about that for a minute, and I'll see you on the other end of this commercial. Welcome to Columbus Connection, and if you didn't figure it out, then we're going to tell you. But before we tell you what the freebie is, I'm going to have the two young ladies to the right of me look into that camera and tell y'all everything about themselves, and then we'll lay the boom on you. Danielle. Hello, I'm Danielle Forte. I'm Clerk of Superior and State Courts, and I'm very pleased to be here. And... Hi, I'm Jennifer Dunlap. I'm a local attorney. I'm with A Second Chance Criminal Record Relief right here in Columbus, Georgia. That probably give you all an inkling of what they're doing here, but I'm going to have them, one of these two ladies, tell you what the big surprise is and what they're, what they're about. Well, uh, we are very excited to be here. We are having, I'm hosting, a Criminal History Summit, which is going to take place on Thursday, November the 22nd, from 10 to 2 p.m., at the Columbus Consolidated Government 11th floor. And I'm here with Jennifer Dunlap of A Second Chance Criminal Record Relief because the Criminal History Summit are, is for people who've had uh, issues with their criminal history record. And we're gonna educate the public on record restrictions formerly known as expungements. And you know, the scripture says, my people purge for what? Lack of knowledge. And so these two young ladies are going, and let me tell you, I meet so many people in the community that have a bump in their record, but you, that could be very restrictive to them. And as scripture always says, we all fall short of the glory of God. So these two young ladies here, Ms. Jennifer Dunlack, and his, what program is it that you're doing? It's, it's the second chance. Criminal second record. chance. You can't beat that because we all need to have second. I know pop bars need a second, third, fourth, or fifth chance in life. So I'm very grateful for them. So let's get started. First of all, Danielle, we're going to go by, um, Bruce, if you can put the first slide up, the slide up, please. That's it. And that's it. Can we go to the next one? With the timeline. And it's, let me tell you, there we go right there. And so I'm going to have the Superior Court clerk go on this timeline. Someone, by the way, that I'm so glad won her election because, you know, I'm too old to be fooled. And I recognized a long time ago that she will be a blessing to the city. So God was extremely good, and she was elected. So I'm going to pass it over to you, uh, Danielle, to go on this timeline here. Okay, well, very, very briefly, um, uh, with the help of the citizens, uh, we won the election on November 6 of 2018. On uh, November 13 of 2018, I took the oath of office and took the office of Clerk of Superior and State Courts. Um, at that time, we were faced with the challenge of e-filing, which was statutorily mandated for to begin January of 2019. And could you, for the sake of our viewing audience, something that I learned is to try to break that down so they know what all that's about and, and, and the reason for it? Well, the reason for it is um, in my office, we have state uh, uh, civil and criminal courts. We have superior criminal and civil courts. And in our civil court divisions in both the state and superior divisions, uh, the legislature uh, body passed a e-filing mandate for civil cases. So instead of taking paper over the counter, the, everyone was required, with the exception of plain citizens, but attorneys uh, were required to e-file documents. You now. I understand. And that was a challenge when I uh, uh, entered office. We had to turn that around very quickly because we had December and then January we were on. We had to start with the e-filing. So we, I was faced with a lot of calls. What is this about? So I had a class. I had an e-filing training session on December the 20th in order to uh, educate people as to what was coming and how to prepare for that. That's awesome. So we turned that around very quickly. 
And then um, as we began, January came and we were doing more with e-filing, some additional questions and concerns came up. And I had promised I was going to do that anyway. So in April, uh, that was kind of a, another training where people could kind of come in, voice grievances if they had any, oh, that's and awesome. kind of get further educated mm -hmm. on the e-filing process. So we did that on April the 1st of 2019. And this is in addition to everything else that you have to do. And in addition to everything else, <laughs> absolutely. And then on April the 29th of 2019, I had a meet the constituents at the Mildred L. Terry Library. Oh, wow. And then on July the 11th, 2019, we had a notar notary public training course. Now, when I stopped into your office to, um, to, to get something, when I saw that, I asked a young lady, very nice young lady too, by the way. Everybody in your office is nice, by the way. They're, they're very, great. They, they, they are they, great. They've been yes. over backwards. And I said, do you mean somebody my age could learn how to be a notary? And she looked at me and all this gray hair, she says, that's what it's all about, sir. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. And we had a great turnout. We that had was awesome. a great turnout. Um, on August the 23rd, I completed my new clerk training in Atlanta. That was very, um, very, a very rigorous course, but we com I completed that. And then on November 21st, the reason why we're here is for the Criminal History Summit. So this is the, I don't want to steal anybody's uh, logo, but that's the granddaddy of them all, you there know. We so we're, yeah, right. we're very excited about the Criminal History Summit. And, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, I've just been so happy. I know that um, Governor Deal is, a, is the one that started the transition. I'm so happy to see um, so many individuals, Jennifer and yourself, jumping on the bandwagon with this right here. So okay, so I'm going to have you two talk about this here and explain okay. about all the things that you're going to have there and available for people. Okay, well I, I will start off and the hard questions and the ones that are difficult and then will stop me, Jennifer will take, take over when, when those questions come up. Uh, but all jokes aside, yes, we're having the Criminal History Summit again uh, to, if you have criminal history problems, uh, you are unable to I guess uh, apply for higher education, yes. uh, homes, and those types of things because of a glitch or whatever on your criminal uh, history record. Uh, this is what this form this form is for you. And let me tell you something, Dan. So many people that I meet in the community, that it, it stops them. They're, they're stymied and moving on. And, and, and unfortunately, a lot of them are married couples that, that really need to be having some semblance of upmovability because of the children. So this is extremely, extremely, extremely awesome. Well, and, and the thing is, a lot of people don't realize this, but there are over 20 million Georgians uh, that have this problem with their criminal history record. And this creates roadblocks for a successful sure. career, a home, and also a college degree. Sure. And so uh, this is very necessary. And um, I was just kind of out and about, just you know, kind of minding my own business and thinking about what, what, what what could I do to kind of give back to the community? That's awesome. I, I happened to run into my buddy here, Jennifer Dunlap. And who had, a, who had a, the same kind of a heart. Right, and right. I expressed to her my concern. And she was, you know, Danielle, have you ever thought about? And so she's the one that brought the idea to me. And I was like, let's see if we can't brainstorm and get something going. This and so awesome. it started just as casually as that. But and you know, so, I always say, and it's, and it's a scripture that, you know, the Lord can even whisper something in your ear or when you're deep in slumber to send a message, but it's on us to be able to be obedient. So I'm just so thankful that you two have thought about doing something like this and here and gotten together. And one of the things I do want to stress, the, the anyone who's interested, this is not your typical form. It's not like someone stands in front of you and they give you a lecture. This is a working form. And so what happens is you go to the website, which is www.muskogeecourts.com backslash Forte Fair, and that's F-O-R-T-E-F-A-I-R. -E okay. You register. Then my office will send you a confirmation. On that confirmation, we will notify you that Jennifer Dunlap of a Second Chance Criminal Record Relief will be in contact with you oh, in wow. order to retrieve your criminal record. And you'll have to fill out some forms, but she'll follow through and she can speak more about the particulars on that. And so what will happen is each individual that registers for the event will have their own individual file. Oh, wow. And so then when they come to the form, they get free legal consultations, people volunteering their time, because in our clerk's office we can't recommend uh, no. attorneys, but these are people volunteering their time, which one will be Jennifer Dunlap, Raymond L Lakes of a Second Chance Criminal Record Relief, 
Michelle De Los Santos of the Law Offices of Michelle De Los Santos, Mark Post of Mark Post Law LLC, and Michael Morrell of Pope Glamry. And so those uh, attorneys will be there in order to educate you on your record. That is awesome because you know that makes it so easy for everyone, anyone can do it, even someone like myself who just knows how to hit the escape button on the computer, but you can go to the library, the people can help you if you don't have um, internet, go to the library, you can do it, and would you explain that? And this is something I want to highlight. You will receive the record. Ms. Dunlap, Jennifer will get the records. Yes. No one else would see it. So there's so many people. I've had two people call me who were concerned about that, and I told them, I said, no, this is your benefit. The individuals are there to help you. You don't have to worry about the scam or what's the, what's the, uh, the word that they used to do where they lure people in and well bait you uh, like bait you're you, getting baited bait you know, and the yes. next thing you know is bad boy about this type of thing that's no, not going to no, happen no this is not that no. and, and what i like about it is the way that you're doing it because everyone's sensitive to their own information about them but they're knowing beforehand I, i'm going to be with someone that has my best interest at heart and my information stays with that person the person's only using it to help me right you can't get any better than that, y'all. This is awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. And see, the thing is to go, you know, we can't promise everyone's record will be restricted on site or that sort of thing, but uh, our goal is that everyone will leave there educated about what they may be able to do with their record, wh where right. their record stands. And, and even that empowers a person because now the hardest thing to get in Columbus for me when I do the health fairs is I have to call Rudine all the time to help me out his legal advice. Yes. So I really appreciate y'all, and I'm hoping in my heart of hearts, and if I know the young ladies to my right, when they see the faces of the people that they are going to be helping, I know there's gonna be something down the line that you're gonna have again for the people. Oh yes, and we're gonna, this is our, our maiden voyage. Or our, we but we're, we're gonna work with this, and the goal is to have this periodically, and we'll see how often, but this is our test run. Right. And so we are hoping that we will get. That's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And we me. were hoping that we would get, you know, a, a, a lot of people out so that we can help as many people as possible. One of the other things I'll be remiss if I did not uh, add is that we have a lot of community partners that have come on board initially. The judges, our state and superior court judges, have volunteered a courtroom and they're on board. The That's Columbus Police Department, they've waived the $20 fee that they usually charge for the criminal records, so they're on board. We have the DA's office, Julia Slater, the district attorney's on board. We have the Solicitor General, mm. uh, Suzanne Goddard, they, they're on board, they, they will be present, they also will be supporting. We've also, since we've gotten started, a lot of elected officials, I think yourself included, will be in attendance, and we've had more community partners come on. We have Gloria Turnich, a superintendent of the Columbus Transitional Center. Mm -hmm. She's uh, registered a bunch of her, um, participants at the Columbus Transitional Center. Also, Ed Arberson Jr., a representative with the Georgia Childhood, uh, Georgia Child Support Outreach. And um, he's over their fatherhood program. Yes. And so they're the latest that kind of joined. So it's, it's been, I love Columbus. I'm from Columbus. And it's kind of turned into a community right. uh, event. And I'm, I'm very pleased about that. Well, let me just tell you something. This is an awesome. And she is from Columbus, and I do know Ms. Dunlap's mother, I've known her for, for a long time, and the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree because your mother's involved in so many things. And so I'm excited about this whole entire project. Now, I want you to try to look in the day, and I know we have it, we've been running it, because we need to put the day and time that this is going to be. Okay, um, the day again is Thursday, November 21st, 2019, from 10 to 2 p.m. at the Columbus Consolidated Government which is 110th Street on the 11th floor. Registration again is at www.muskogeecourts.com backslash Forte Fair, which is F-O-R-T-E-F-A-I-R. Registration ends on November the 15th. So you have until mm -hmm. November the 15th to register. I'm glad you mentioned that. 
Right, because that gives Ms. Dunlap uh, time to the get time it. to get everything going. Mm -hmm. And um, our clerk's office, of course, we can't provide legal advice. No, but our, our guru for this has been Ms. Dunlap. As that's far the, as that's yeah, the guru, right? That, this is the guru. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, as far as um, uh, getting the records and getting everything um, kind of pre-screened for mm -hmm. the event. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take a break right now. I, I told you, you know, very rare. This is freebie for the community. Isn't this awesome for these two young ladies to do something like this here? And what gets me, I'm going to have her mention again, all the community partners. The run reason why I came back to Columbus, because Columbus is full of a lot of good-hearted people. And so we're going to come right back right after this next commercial. <laughs> Man, I wish the city would fix these darn potholes. Someone needs to report this. Has this ever happened to you and you didn't know who to call? It's simple. Dial 311 or 706 653 4000. Columbus 311 Citizen Service Center. Our goal is to provide complete, accurate, and timely information to citizens and employees regarding complaints, inquiries, and requests for information. Columbus 311 Citizen Service Center, your direct link to city service. Welcome back to Columbus Connection. We've, we've gotten all that information today, so I'm just going to take what we say a council, a little personal privilege right now, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about these two young ladies, who, who I'm very proud of. And you know, very rarely do I campaign for anyone. I'm so glad that this young lady is in office, and you're going to be coming up for re-election or yes. again, aren't you? Absolutely. What um, The previous election was a special election to complete the term of our previous clerk that passed away, Dr. Ann Hartman. And let me just stop you before you finish. That goes to show you how God can bless because everyone in the community knew that uh, Dr. Hartman was ill and the one thing they wanted was someone. And you talk about a scripture again now, ram in the bush. This young lady was a rare bit of voice. Oh, okay. thank you. Pretty That's sad. so sweet. And so because it was a special election, then I was just finishing out, I'm finishing out her term, and now I have to run again. So uh, it was a dress rehearsal. I haven't been in office a year yet, and I'm having to uh, but, run again, which is which is which is. But great. I'm amazed at all that you've done and that you have a heart for the community. I'm a good, good, I can really focus people really good and know, so my heart tells me that I made the right decision. Jennifer, tell me a little bit about you. Now, I've read in a paper and seen on TV this young lady here, but tell me a little bit about yourself. I know her mama, too, for a long time. Yeah, well, I've been a practicing attorney here in Columbus for about the last 15 years. I spent most of that time at the district attorney's office, and that's where myself and Ms. Fortier met. She was uh, prosecuting cases, and I was also in felony prosecution. So y'all weren't all doing all this, y'all y'all, y'all duff and duff, and you got to be friends. Yeah, we were fighting on the same side. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, we developed a relationship at that time. Um, she was awesome at what she did, and then I think went on to do some other things within the DA's office, and I mm -hmm. did as well, a mm -hmm. little bit separate from actual felony prosecution, but that's where I got to know criminal records, because I was the person granting or denying expungement requests and granting or denying first offender requests and that kind of thing for uh, Ms. Slater at the time. Um, so I went into private practice. Really, um, doing record related things is my passion. Oh, um, wow. So post conviction so relief is my right specialty. With what you're doing. Yeah, this is what I do every day. Um, and so there are an enormous amount of issues that I see every day with people's criminal records. And there are a lot of people walking around and I'll ask them, like, why are you walking around with all this? Like, you could have been applying and checking. I have, you know, nothing on my record, mm -hmm. you know, but it's just, it's like you said, it's just a matter of people knowing right. what's available and knowing how that applies to their particular situation. Um, and so, you know, just in talking to so many folks about it, I ended up having a meeting with Ms. Forte and just saying, hey, look, this is what the problems are. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, your office can help. And she said, well, we'll do whatever we can to help, which um, there are a lot of different areas, I guess, of, of issues when it comes to criminal records. There are some new laws that have passed that meant that people that have one felony conviction may be able to get an order of, ex of exoneration. And, oh, are you serious? Yes, and be able to check that they do not any longer have a felony conviction that and no longer awesome. be, so that's huge. Um, and then there are also um, the fact that in Georgia, unless you do something affirmatively, every arrest that you have, whether it's dismissed or not, remains on the criminal record and remains visible to employers. Now, that, that is something that I did not know until a couple of years ago. And, I'm, and I know that's something that, because I know you're going to educate individuals. I know you're going to 
besides help them with their record, give them additional information that they need to know. Because no one's a, a, Yeah, people say, oh, that should be off my record. No, you, it was dismissed, and it's showing up as dismissed, but your employer still wouldn't it know happened what you were arrested for. It happened that I know. Right. It happened to him, and it delayed mm -hmm. his in-processing. Mm -hmm. So I'm so glad that you want to do this. Isn't it marvelous to have individuals that have a heart for others? They could be doing a myriad number of other things. But I'm going to tell you something. This is what just makes my soul feel so good to know that we've got people like this that will do things in the community. You want to know something? Danielle gave an excellent presentation at City Council. So what we're going to do, I'm going to ask uh, um, Bruce or Mr. King to run that segment for additional information. I am Danielle Forte, I'm clerk of uh, Superior and State Courts, and I'm here to bring awareness to an event that I am having, a uh, hosting, I should say, on November 21st um, at 10 to 2 p.m. at the Columbus Consolidated Government, um, uh, which is at 110th Street on the 11th floor. And um, it's a criminal history summit for those with criminal record problems. Uh, we are educating the public, oh, thank you, educating the public on record restrictions, formerly known as uh, expungements. And we're doing this in partnership with the Superior and State Court judges. They have provided us with the co uh, courtroom in order to have the event. Also, the police department, they have graciously waived for those who are registering for the event they have waived the $20 fee that they normally charge for criminal records uh, for anybody participating in the event. We're also partnering with the district attorney's office and the solicitor general's office that will also be uh, participating in the event. And I do want to make it very clear that this is a free community event and there is limited space available and that those who are interested that have a criminal history uh, record um, can register at www.muskogeecourts.com backslash Forte, F-O-R-T-E, Fair, F-A-I-R. And the reason um, how this came about is there are over 2 million Georgians with a criminal history record. And those with criminal history records um, encounter roadblocks when it comes to a successful career, uh, a home, or getting a college degree. And actually, it came about as a result of a conversation that I had with one of the uh, attorneys that are volunteering in the event and providing pro bono free consultations, Jennifer Dunlap, of uh, a second chance criminal record relief. She and I had a conversation, and she brought this to that, uh, the problem. She made me aware of it. And at that time, we, we uh, formulated uh, a plan uh, for the event and it kind of took off and it's been taking off ever since so I'm very pleased with her for bringing this to my attention and uh, I said that would be very happy to host the event. Uh, this is if you register this is the registration application that you will see if you go online and uh, once you fill this out our office the state and Superior Court clerk's office sends you a confirmation from that point, the information goes to Jennifer Dunlap at a Second Chance Criminal Record Relief, and she does the legwork with uh, getting and obtaining the registrant's criminal history record. So that's how the police department knows that you are uh, regist uh, registrating, uh, you are a registrant for this event, is when she goes out and obtains that record. A file is made, and so that when you attend the event, on Thursday, November 21st, you have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with attorneys that are volunteering, and you are getting a consultation on your particular record. And so um, one of the things that um, we're kind of stressing to the public, uh, those that we're communicating with, is that this is not a free-for-all. We want to ensure some level of privacy for those that are registering for the event so that they can have a productive consultation. So this is a working form. This is a form where an individual, our goal is for that individual to lo uh, leave the form with individual information about their particular criminal history record and what steps they 
uh, may need to take in order to get their record restricted. If we see something on site that can be rectified on site, we're doing it on site on that day. So um, this, is, this is the goal of the event. And our last slide is basically the uh, flyer that we are submitting uh, and distributing to the community to bring awareness. The uh, attorneys providing free legal services and, and, and uh, consultations, again, is Jennifer Dunlap and Raymond Lakes of a Second Chance Criminal Record Relief. The law offices of Michelle De Los Santos, Michelle De Los Santos will be present. Mark Post of Mark Post Law LLC and Mike Morrell of Pope Glamoury PC will also be available. I hope that you were able to glean a lot more and, and what you saw in the film just emphasized what you, what you heard here. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna want each one of these two young ladies to look into that camera and give all y'all the information about them. Um, I'm gonna start with, I started first with Danielle. Yes. I'm gonna start with Jennifer first. <laughs> okay. Look into that camera and put all the information that you want people to know about you. Okay, sure. So I'm Jennifer Dunlap again. Um, I own a Second Chance Criminal Record Relief where we specialize in post-conviction relief. Uh, there are two other attorneys that work alongside me. Uh, we're over on Winton Road. We're at 1332 Winton Road within the go. law office of Forrest Johnson & Associates. Our number is 706-507-1381. Uh, and that's how you can reach me. But you brought us up. I was prior to this year, I was teasing her because she was so quiet. She made up for that just then, didn't she? <laughs> Danielle, when you look into that space and tell everybody about what you I think can reach you. My pleasure. I would love to do so. My name is Danielle Forte. I'm the clerk of Superior and State Courts. I'm at 100 10th Street, second floor, Tower, Columbus, Georgia, 31901. My phone number is 706 653 4370. Again, I'll say that 706 56, I mean, I'm sorry, 706. 653-4370. You can also email me if you have questions at askdaniel at columbusgeorgia.org. And I am your clerk of Superior and State Courts, and I thank you for your vote and your confidence and your support. And um, I hope that those that are have the criminal history problems will register for the event. We still have open slots again. That registration ends on November the 15th, so you have plenty of time. You can go on the website. It's www.muskogeecourts.com backslash Forte Fair. Get up at 2 a.m. You can, you can register. You know, we're taking registrations, uh, applications around the clock, and I hope you can come out and, and get good information about how you can address anything that you see that's unfit or you feel is unfit in your criminal history record. That's your superior court clerk at work on steroids, doing a lot of things that uh, she doesn't have to do, but that our heart tells her to do. And Miss Jennifer, who I got her to say more than just nod a little bit. So if I have any problems, and I will, uh, I was getting a little bit scared, I will give you a call, because I know you could talk to get me out of trouble. Right? <laughs> okay. Yes. Once again, thank you all for tuning in for another program of Columbus Connection. God bless you.